What I'll do is I'll, I'll talk you from my program. Okay, that's just like elite sports program. And then I'll, you, you can like, you can tailor that to how, because some people might train other, they might lift as well. And that's all going to play a part. But it, the, the system should always work the same. It's the same when you lift. So for me, let's say I've got a competition in six weeks. That's written down one to six. Um, and the same Monday to Friday is written down the same. Okay, so my hard days is always a hard day. My medium day is a medium day. My rest day is a, me a rest day. Active recovery day, we'll call it. Um, and it's simple as that. So Monday is my hard day. I do my hard sparring. I, I do quite a lot of sessions and I do my hard lifting on that day, all in one, which sounds insane when I first when I first uh, like tried this. Yeah. Um, but what happens is, is then the next day is my sort of medium day where I'm going to do the same intensity, but maybe I don't spar with my coach Ian because I know if I spar with somebody that's high level, I'm going to be put into that sort of zone where it's hard. And then my Wednesday is like an active recovery day. So maybe that day I will spar still, but it's a, a, a lot lower intensity and it's no um, no lifting on that day. Maybe some prehab work, it's sauna work, it's stretching, it's mobility. Then Thursday we go back again. That's my hard day again. So that's when I'm going to do my lifting. I'll do push on a Monday and say pull on a on a Thursday and I do my hard sparring on that day. Friday again, that's when we take the tempo back down. Saturday goes back to active recovery. Sunday sparring, get back getting back for ready for um for Monday. In that as well, my, my weeks are numbered one to six, say if I've got competition. So week one would be like, okay, getting into this training program, let's take it steady. Week two is like, let's pick the pace up. Week three is leave no stone unturned. You're just going to die this week. Just suck it up. It's going to be shit. Okay, but you just <laughs> got to get through it. It's just that's the mentality that you need for that week. Week four is the opposite. Okay, if you can't spar hard on that Monday, don't worry too much. If you're not killing yourself on the weights, it doesn't really matter. More of a tapered off week. Uh, week five, pick the pace back up again. Week six, taper off and then compete. And also in there as well, I do like to do some competitions in there because, okay, the the, the competitions is I go back and forth with my trainer Adam with this is um the competitions are they are hard but sometimes I'm doing like three or four rounds which is like twenty minutes of work. So like if it's not too bad for me. And if I'm not tied to the outcome of those small competitions, yeah. they're really good for goal setting for the big competitions. So sometimes I'll just put in the, the local competitions and, and the other comps because I'm not really too bothered about if I win or lose on those comps. It's just really for, to get me ready for that big competition on the big stage where I want to be hitting that stage, knowing that I've done everything I can to sort of compete at that level. Yeah. So if you are a blue belt, you know, you can structure that around it. So it means if you're busy with work, pick two days where you can sort of maybe try and get your lifting in and your and your training. I know it's difficult to do that with time constraints and stuff. So it's just that you just don't go to the jiu-jitsu practice on a Monday, lift heavy on a Tuesday, jiu-jitsu practice on a work, because then your body's not recovering and any of that is, you're just literally, put, you know, if you have the weekend off and then if you do an open mat on a Sunday, you've got one day of rest that whole week. It's just a matter of time for your burnout. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised when you said heavy jiu-jitsu and lifting on the same day but, yeah but yeah it does make sense and you've explained it like that and you said you do push and then pull do you do like legs as well do you do yeah. the full body yeah well it's i'm um, under um my trainer adam just yeah. he, he sort of like writes a program for me yeah, it's okay. like i could do it myself but it's just nice to have somebody there that's like you know he's been in the business for years now he's like you don't have to think about it mate. that's what i say about, to yeah. people you just go there just turn up yeah, yeah he's got it all sorted for you yeah and that's, that's the biggest thing in it it is for a pt you know it is amazing and it's that accountability yes having that accountability yeah. you know if you were not if you haven't got him yeah. and i know you're really regimented but even still you might think oh fuck it, i'm fucking knackered today i can't be asked mm -hmm. whereas you know you've got to go see adam yeah so it's like yeah no nah, you're not going to be lazy fucker today we're going to do po and it's you know and that's that and when you do when you see you do heavyweight session um what sort of um sort of ranges are you working in so are you doing like are you doing like olympic style lifting you're doing power lifting you're doing hypertrophy work yeah he he structures that so as i said i don't really think about it too okay. much um but if we're doing stuff, it's it, it's hard because you'll see all these fancy programs out there for like, oh, improve your jiu-jitsu with this. But mm. all of my games in jiu-jitsu are made on the mat. And even all my conditioning is on the mat because I do so much training. It's like I don't need to go and do a run or do whatever. So we keep it super simple. And like we've been working together for so long now. And plus... 
he's been training for so many years. It's it's nothing fancy. It's just the simple stuff, but it's just for a long time. So the push and the pull ones is what really where he pushes me on, say, a squat and a deadlift. But it'll be more of a suitcase deadlift, and it'd be more of a um, squat. It'd be a box squat, yeah. and all the other training is is pretty much you know there's some stuff in there that will change and mix around. But a lot of, like, I'm in the gym and, like, you know, I've been up the nut field and wherever, gym most days, but I'm not doing the strength training. So I'm doing training still, but I'm not, like, pushing myself in, in, in those areas um, unless I'm doing those two sessions a week. I'm still doing, I'm still lifting on the other days, but it's not it's not lifting heavy or it's more for that prehab sort of work. Yeah, okay. And you, I think you just kind of answered it there, but cardio, mm-hmm. do you just leave that to the mats? Pretty much? Um, yeah, but now what I've found is as you do get more efficient in your movement, it's harder to sort of get that. I mean, I remember being a white belt and coming out like, oh my God, I'm dead. And just thinking, because I did CrossFit for a long time as well. And I was like, well, this is just the same as CrossFit. But now I don't finish a session like when I used to do like a CrossFit session. It's, it's not the same intensity for me anymore. There is structure to it. So that, that Monday session that I was talking about, that's when like I'll meet with my coach and we'll say, okay, we're going to do three 10 minute rounds and we just go at each other. We've never injured each other. It's always like, you know, we tap fast, but I know he's going to try and kill me and I'm going to try and kill him. And it's like, because that's what we need for that Monday session. Um, and that's cardio for me. But what I have been finding re- recently is the zone two cardio has been helping me out massively and um, stuff like the. What, what does that mean for most people? So it's just, a, it's a weird, it's a weird cardio, which I don't know if you can actually call it cardio because you're not actually out of breath that much, but it's just a slow, steady sort of the step master. I use that quite a lot or I use a bike or a salt bike and I'm just steady pushing it through and I'm trying to do it for past 45 minutes yeah so is it zone two is that based off your rest your heart rate yes yeah so, so again of with the, yeah. yeah so okay. again with the whip i've got that on if the phone move, yeah you just must keep an eye yeah. on it yeah just keep an eye but, it, it, but it's steady there. but it's steady state cardio yes yeah. yes yeah and, and it's a really good way it's a really good way to um to yeah. build that up yeah it, it builds my recovery up strangely enough and there's also you can sit in the sauna you sit in the sauna with, with my whip on my heart rate's elevated for like for a good half an hour to 40 minutes mm. in the sauna and I'm not moving. I'm drinking electrolytes while I'm in there. Um, and same on the bike. I'm, I'm just stay, it's, it's, you know, it's the most boring part of my, my sort of um, workout, but I do find that it, that's having more of a, a, an impact impact. And I do think for longevity wise stuff like, but it's like, how, how do you fit it all in? Do you, do, yeah. oh, can you do two hours of uh, it's like, do you know what I mean? Zone two training a week. Can, can you do jets and mm. then strength? It's hard to fit it all in. Yeah. I've been looking at these um like these bike desks. On, oh yeah, yeah. That you can like paddle, <laughs> and then you got like a little desk on there yeah. as well. I think I need one of those these days. Yeah, yeah. So you can do much. zone two and answer emails and all yeah, that as well. So. Dream. 